Hey guys, welcome to my workshop. I uh, use this shop quite a lot, but I'm not talking about that today. What we're doing is a different kind of video for me. We're not going to do a gig vlog, but I'm going to take you on a tour through my gear. What I generally bring to gigs, depending on the gig, pretty much the same thing usually. So it's all going to start with what I've got right here on this table. Okay, here it is, my gig box, my box full of stuff that I will generally take to a gig. Unless it's acoustic gig, or uh, circumstances vary. This is what I usually bring to a gig. This is a black box, I made it out of plywood myself, here in the shop. And it's got a drawer, and that's where all of the stuff is. Okay, so let me show you through what I'm taking. Okay, we're going to just start from the top of the box, and I'll discuss the things as we go. So first out is this. This is a microphone gooseneck with a clamp. Okay, microphone gooseneck with a clamp. It's got a mic clip in one end, which I use to either put a microphone on or my camera mount. I have a, a, a microphone shaped camera mount. It, it screws into the tripod uh, receptacle and then you can put your camera in a mic stand which is what I'm doing right now so you know don't always use it but I've always got it set that over there guitar cord a guitar cord okay I usually get 20 foot lengths I think I've got some 10 footers in there I usually get a 20 foot length though it's just such a good all-around size now one thing that I want to show you about this is that almost all of my cables have this. This is a Velcro wrap, a Velcro tie. Um, you can get them at Home Depot. You get like a dozen of them at a time. And I put these on all of my cables so that when you put them away, they stay nice and neat, nice and tidy. Okay. Easy to get to. You never know when you're going to need to get to one, you know, soon, quick, suddenly. So guitar cord. I see a lot of those. Gaffer tape. This is about a uh, third used. Gaffer tape is different than duct tape. Gaffer tape doesn't leave a sticky residue, but it's every bit as strong. Might even be stronger, okay? So gaffer tape, I highly recommend to get it. It's kind of expensive. I think this was like 17 bucks, 27 something. I don't know, but it's kind of pricey, but it lasts a long time. Nicest thing about it is, once again, it comes off without leaving a residue, which Duct tape won't do, it'll leave crud on there. And duct tape is usually silver, though you can get colors. This is black, blends in professional theatrical material right here. This is, these, these are the goods, this is the stuff, okay? Gaffer tape. Also, when somebody needs a piece of tape, which happens a lot, you got it, it's amazing what you can fix with gaffer tape. So, microphone cable with a Velcro tie. Oh, let's look back here. And a microphone in a case, not just banging around by itself. It's got a, it's got a, call them clown noses, a uh, windscreen. It's got a windscreen on it. So even if you aren't on a gig that you sing on, somebody usually forgets a microphone. Okay? My stand light. This is my stand light. It's nice in this nice package. Mighty bright. Mighty bright. Okay, <laughs> so I like this stand light a lot. It's very good, works good. I got it at Guitar Center, it was like 30 bucks or something. I don't, I don't remember. Okay, so you open it up and there's your light. Okay, so there's the light and there's the battery pack. It takes three, I, yeah, three, three AA batteries, AAA batteries, three. So nice thing is, it's also got a power supply. Then a little wall warp here and like a 15 foot cord, which is really nice, nice long cord. So I usually try to plug it in because it doesn't fade out on you. One tip about getting a stand light, the, the on off switch, make sure it's like a sliding switch or something and not a push button. Push buttons get their buttons pushed and they go on while they're sitting in your gig box going dead. So be careful about that. Okay, I've had black, I've had those other kinds and they're almost always dead. You know, you've got better things to do than buy batteries, much less change them at the last minute before a show starts, when your batteries poop out. Okay, stand by. A 
power strip. Okay, power strips are good. This power strip has about a 10 foot cord on it. So I often just use it as a, an extension cord rather than, you know, a power strip. Even if I plug one thing in, I may just need that extra footage. So there we go, power strip. And pro tip, put your name on stuff. Okay, that way you'll get it back, usually. Let's see. Oh, here is a upright base wheel. Okay, upright base wheel. For you upright players out there, great accessory. Really handy thing. So what it does is it replaces the end pin. You can just clamp it down like an end pin and just roll away. And it makes moving an upright base a lot easier. They're pretty common. You know, they're around. And I picked this particular one because it has a brake on it. So if you set the brake, the wheel doesn't turn, and you can actually just leave it on your base to do the gig. Unfortunately for me, it makes the base about that much too high, so it throws my intonation off. I've done it. <laughs> I've had to always remember, you're playing sharp, you're playing sharp. So, base wheel, good investment. Here is my iPad mount. My iPad mount, I use a lot. Uh, it's kind of the state of the art these days to have your music on an iPad. Uh, there's various reasons for that, good reasons. Uh, you don't, they're not as, well, they're fragile in a different way than a book is, but they're not quite as fragile. They're self-lit. You don't need a stand light if you're reading off an iPad. It's really nice. You can look stuff up on them if you've got Wi-Fi or if you're fortunate to have a, a data plan for it. It's useful. I've got I've got complete fake books on my iPad. Anyhow, this is the mount. It mounts on a uh, microphone stand. Show you right here. This clips to the mic stand. Oops, upside down. And then your iPad goes in there. And this thing's been beaten and battered so bad. It's been so used up. Uh, I keep a strip of gaffer tape on it to tape my iPad on, which is a good idea anyhow. It's, you know, one drunk knocks into it without it taped on and it's gone, and they will. So, okay, iPad mount. Can you film camera a little bit? Uh, my tuner, my tuner. This is a little Korg tuner. Pretty spiffy, I like it. Okay, it's like a strobe tuner. And then I've got it attached to a little uh, pigtail with a right angle on this end. It just, a dedicated cable for your cable, for your tuner makes life a little bit simpler. And, okay, so I'm a tuba player. I play a lot more upright bass because there's more work for it, but I'm a tuba player. And I had, you would think that I'd, you know, I'd had a polka gig, you know, long ago, but no, not, not in Northern California especially. I had my first polka band gig about a year and a half ago, and which kind of cracks me up. It's weird. So I'm playing this gig. There was two accordionists and a drummer and me. We're playing along, and people are dancing and having a great time. It's a lot of fun. Oh, pawing away. I was also playing bass, but I was playing an awful lot of tuba that day. And in the middle of the second set, we're playing along, happy as can be. A bunch of women run up to the stage and they shower us with, guess what? That's right, women's underwear. I had to do a polka gig before I had women's underwear thrown on, at me on stage. They were clean. I know what you were thinking. They're brand new. So anyway, I kept some. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aren't they cute? Aren't they adorable? They're not my color, though, so no rude suggestions. Just a souvenir. Okay, what else is in my gig box? Oh, these are nice. Now, we're getting down to the weird little stuff now at the bottom. Music clips. Music clips. They're like clothespins, only better. They've got a clear section, so you could clip it over your sheet music and still read it. Nice to have. This is a drumstick holder, okay? 
drumstick holder. It clamps onto a, a drum stand. I clip it to my mic stand and I put my bow in. Okay? I don't like those bow, holster, bow holsters because if you put something in a bow holster and I spin my bass once in a while, that's a bad idea. So I don't like bow holsters. A lot of guys do. Fine. Good on them. But I use this. I just attach it down there and I stick my bow down in it. And it also sounds like a barbell, which freaks bartenders out. It's more fun. Let's see. What else we got? Tech 21 Sans Amp. Okay, this is the Sans Amp Bass Driver DI. As you can see, this thing's been around the block a few times. It's got some Velcro on the back from when I had it on my pedal board. It's missing a couple knobs. This is a really nice little preamp. It works fabulous. I like it a lot. I use it all the time for my electric upright. You can dial in a little bit of grit with the drive button. Um, it's got phantom power. It's got a ground lift. It's a really good DI, but I almost always use it. I I'm more often use it as a preamp. Um, really nice. One of the best buys I've made. And uh, I'm kind of due for a new one. The switch is starting to wear out, and it's just <laughs> banged up. It lasts a long time on one 9-volt battery, too. You can plug them in, but it lasts a long time on one 9-volt, which is great. Guitar cable. This one's a 10-footer. Another 10-foot guitar cable. A 20-foot guitar cable. Okay. A towel. This is just an old bar mop style towel. Super useful. Super useful all the time. You wipe your strings down with it. After you're, after you're done, you keep your hands from perspiring. Just tuck it in your back pocket. You've always got it. Uh, you spill your beer. Yeah, all right. I'll use my towel and mop it up so we don't walk through it. But there's a nice terry cloth towel. A chamois, and I'm not even sure why it's here because it's much too nice to leave in my gig case. So as a matter of fact, I can just throw it over there and use it for something better. All right, let's see what else have we got here. Um, a 20-foot guitar cable with a right angle plug. Another 20-foot guitar cable. You notice they've all got the Velcro. They're all Velcroed up. I have got here a looks like a two-foot cable. Sometimes you just need a shorty cord. Kind of hard to play with that just on your, uh, from your base to your amp. I have got an AB switch. Not too thrilled with this AB switch. This one is by Boss. It's an AB2. It has a couple of colored LEDs to tell you which one you're on. You got to put a AA battery in it just to run the LEDs. If the battery runs out, the whole pedal doesn't work. Not a great design. So, you know, I prefer a passive one. As a matter of fact, I have a passive one, but Mark has borrowed it. That It's just a switch. Okay? But an AB switch. AB switches are handy for a lot of things. Okay? If you've got two bases, you know, on gigs that I double with an electric and an upright, I'll run them into the AB switch and into my amplifier. You can use, I've used one of the outputs as put my tuner in it. So I can just stomp on my AB switch and it kicks over to my tuner. Kind of nice, it's also like a mute switch, even if you didn't plug anything into the B channel. Or you can run your bass to two separate amplifiers, just run it backwards, right? A lot of people don't think of that, but. So an AB switch can be ha handy to have around. Hardly necessary, nice to have. This is part of my old iPad clip. Just put that there. We're getting down to the bottom, and it's getting a little bit funky down here. Here is an old, an old stand light. Use it if I have to. This is one of the push button ones, and oh, what a surprise! It's dead. So. I hope this isn't dead. A flashlight. Nice to have a flashlight. Places are dark. And you could probably see in here a little bit, but you'll notice that the inside of my inside of my box, I didn't paint it black. Okay. 
I left it natural wood, so it's lighter, so I can see stuff. Most of the stuff here on the table, it's black. You can't see it. So if you leave the inside of your box a light color, then you can you can see what you're looking at. Okay, I've got a folding guitar stand for electric guitars. I use it for my bass. If I forget a proper stand, just folds up. Doesn't take a lot of room. I like these. Not the most stable thing on earth, but I like it. Uh, let's see. Old bits of tape. <laughs> Sometimes these end up as a garbage can, too. Uh, old bits for my old iPad stand. Let's see. Fingernail clippers. Fingernail clippers. Right? Right. Here is the owner's manual for my light strip, which is over there, but I always have the instructions so I can figure out how to get it back to on, because it doesn't make sense. Oops. Here's a crutch tip or cane tip. Okay, crutch tips, cane tips, I get them at the drugstore, they go on my end pin. Okay, I don't, I don't have a sharp pointy spike on my end pin or any gimmicky thing. You can get these anywhere for fairly cheap end pin. Okay, I think I had to put some plastic tubing around my actual end pin before I put the foot on. But they wear out. So you get them in, the, in a box of two. Keep a spare. All right, this is a headphone jack to RCA connector. Okay, we call it a gazenta, so you know you can you can make sure that your your phone goes into that. Usually the PA. All right, so this hooks up to the PA, so you can play piped in music between your sets. Okay, I carry one. My buddy Mark carries one. A lot of people carry them. If you've got a PA, this is a good thing to have. Then you can play music between sets. Wrap it up. Now this one doesn't have a have a have a Velcro wrap. Okay, it's a thinner cord and it's not very long. Here's what I do is I usually wrap it around a few times. I leave a little extra and then I thread it through and wrap it through like that a couple of three times. Then it stays put. The Gazenta. Uh, a couple of spare AAA batteries. One shy of what I need for my stand light. Um, a binder clip. You never know. Might be handy to have. Okay, my toolkit. This is an old. <laughs> Put more gaffer tape stuff to it. My cool toolkit. This is an old microphone case that I acquired so I can use it to keep my toolkit in. So. Let me show you a close-up of what I've got going on in my toolkit. Okay, so here's my toolkit. This is kind of a weird angle, sorry about that. Oh, nail clipper. So, pencil, mechanical pencils. I like mechanical pencils because you don't have to sharpen them. Okay, that's really nice. You're sitting down in, a, in an orchestra pit. There's no sharpeners nearby. So, pencil sharpener. Or pencil. <laughs> Why look? Two. Guess what? More nail clippers. Earplugs. Nice to have. I seldom use earplugs. I should, but I seldom do. But those are fairly decent ones. I need to get better ones, and I don't know actually. Even. This is a bass winder, a bass peg winder for strings when you're changing strings. So you can, uh, you know. Wind up your, your strings on your peg a little bit better. Nice thing about this one is you take that off and you can put that in an electric drill and do it a lot quicker, a little easier, okay? So I keep it with because you never know when you have to change strings, which also reminds me, I always keep extra strings in my gig bags of my instruments. The, you know, I just keep the old set of strings. Better than nothing if something breaks, okay? All right, a multi-tool. Super duper handy. This is the thing to have, a nice medium sized uh, multi-tool, you got pliers, you got wire cutters, you've got, you know, 
saws and knives and screwdrivers and you have scissors. I think this one's got scissors. This one's got scissors. This one has scissors. Okay, you never know. Handy thing to have. Not only do you need it, so do your bandmates who don't bring all that stuff. Okay, and yeah, the multi-tool has screwdrivers. They're not very good. I have a multi-tool that's a multi-tool screwdriver. You take this tip out and you get a smaller Phillips end. Pop that out, switch it around. You have a standard blade screwdriver and that's in two sizes as well. Really handy thing to have. Now what else is in here? I've got an extra, hey, named after me, hex head wrench, Allen wrench for, I believe this is the size for neck adjustments, but I could be mistaken. And it's kind of beat up and I should replace it, a Band-Aid. Right? You wear out there at the gig, you're wearing dress shoes, get a blister, Band-Aid. You get a blood blister adjusting a microphone, here you go, Band-Aid. Nice to have a couple. And that's what's in my tool bag. So there you go. That's a tour of what I usually take to gigs in my gig box. It's a lot of stuff, but it all fits in here. Okay, it's really a nice size thing. So now I gotta put it back. Okay, so one more thing that I didn't show you in my gig box. One of the one of the funner modifications that I've got in there that I like a lot, and uh, I think I'm very clever for it, is right here in the corner of the drawer. See that? Yeah! There you go. See that little hook? You know what goes there? My keys. Okay, when I'm at a gig, my car keys. You know, I'm playing bass. I don't want the car keys in my pocket, so I hang them in there. They're on my stage, they're under my amp, they're safe, I know where they are. It's pretty obvious that somebody tries to open this box because they're going to struggle around with it. So I don't feel bad about it. That's where I put my keys when I'm at a gig. So don't get any ideas. Anyway, there you go. That's a tour of my gig box. Thank you. Good night.